Hey folks, Jimmy here, aka Palette of the Dead. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new Warhammer painting video. Now as per usual with all the videos, if you like them, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and of course, drop a comment down below. Love hearing back from you guys, it goes a massive way to help the channel too. And without further ado, let's jump into it. So, for this video, for a new painting video, I decided to go for something slightly different from what I normally would. So, if you've been watching all my Mortal Realms videos, you know that I've been collecting the Stormcast Eternals and the Night Horned Armies that have come with that magazine. But, of course, recently, the third edition of Warhammer Age of Sigmar has come out, and in the shape of the Warhammer Age of Sigmar Dominion box set, as well as some of the new starter packs now, and I bought the Dominion box. So recently I released a video where I showed off how I painted up Indrasta, the Celestial Spear, uh, a fantastic centerpiece model, and definitely, definitely one worthy of anybody's time if you want to paint it, and it's a perfect addition to Stormcast Eternals, and yeah, it's a fantastic kit. It's a really, really nice, nice model. But of course, you didn't just get Stormcast Eternals in that box. So. I wanted to show how I've gone about painting the first auric I've painted for a long, long time in the f kind of shape of the Swamp Caller Shaman. Now, with the Swamp Caller Shaman, I have started off fully built and fully assembled, which is quite unusual for me, and I base coated the entire lot in Mechanica Standard Grey. Now, Mechanica Standard Grey is a very, very good colour because it works very, very well with dark tones and you're going to want to start off with some greens for the flesh. So, I started off with Warboss Green for the kind of the first layer for the flesh and then I layered over the new Auric flesh over as a second layer. Doing it this way, it means I ch have chosen not to use a shade over the flesh. I think using a shade over the flesh would have kind of diluted it and made everything, all the recesses far too dark. So there is a good reason that I didn't bother doing it. Now, with these guys having living in the swamps, you're going to want some really, really good earthy colours. So browns are, of course, fantastic earthy colours. And I started off with Mournfang brown, which is a brighter brown than normal. Then moving on to the patchwork, I've used Hobgrot Hide, which is one of the other new paints, and it works very, very well. It's a pretty cool paint. It does exactly what you need it to do. So definitely worth cracking on with that over certain areas of certain models as well. It works very well. Kind of like Zandri Dust. And then for the top kind of layer of kind of uh, clothing and leather, uh, I went for good old... Uh, Dryad Bark, so it gives it a very darker kind of muddy looking kind of colour to the kind of top covers, which is pretty good. Um, it works very, very well for that kind of swampy look and it does exactly the job that you're going to need it to do. And then moving on to the staff uh, that he's carrying, I used Baneblade Brown over this guy. Um, it works very, very well. It's a bit different. It stands out more from what is currently used. You could use, if you wanted to, Gore 4 Brown, and it'll be slightly lighter and slightly different. Um, entirely up to you how you want to do it. Or you could use Greys if you wanted to. In completely your choice. Works very, very well no matter how you do it. And then once all of them were done, I literally just laid over with Norn Oil. So Norn Oil, of course, goes into all them recesses, darkens them up very, very well, gives them a lot of shading, and it makes it look pretty cool. So as you can see on that staff, it goes into all them little knots and them kind of grooves and everything like that that works very, very well for when you're doing this kind of work. And then, once all that was dry... I literally moved on to the Kragnos kind of plate that is over his midriff using corn red. Now, when I used this, I also put it layered over with Norn Oil afterwards and then layered over with corn, corn red again and then some very, very fine edge highlights of Mephiston Red. Works very, very well. It did a pretty good job as well. 
But of course, there is a big piece of the Swamp Caller Shaman, which is of course that big gargant skull that is on his back, and literally just use Wraithbone. Very, very simple trick. Wraithbone and then Skeleton Horde contrast paint over the top does a brilliant job of making it look like actual bone. So a very cool way of doing it, a very easy way of doing it, but it's a, a good technique to use. And then once all that was dry, it was time to move on to kind of that kind of hand that is on the top of the staff, and I used Hash Hut Copper for that bit. Uh, some of the other metallic work, of course, I've used Iron Breaker for the ring that he's holding everything together in that hand, uh, over his kind of the little dish that he's holding that he's pouring out his spell, and a couple of the other parts to him as well, like the dagger that he's carrying that type of stuff. Use Iron Breaker, it works very, very well. Layer over with Norn Oil, highlighter back over with the metallics that you're using, and it does a pretty good job of, for that kind of character. Now, of course, there are other steps that you can utilize, and it's entirely up to you and how you want to interpret it. Have fun with it. Really, really good model, though, to have. But, of course, if you're going to have a Swamp Caller Shaman, who is a fantastic model all in itself, you are going to need to have his little buddy, the Pot Grot, along for the ride. So, of course, I also painted up that guy as well. So here he is. Uh, with this one, I've started off with the flesh being Auric Flesh, the new paint uh, as kind of a base coat over Mechanica Standard Grey. And then I literally layered over all them areas. It stands out pretty well. It makes him look very, very different as well with him being a grot. Uh, you want him to stand out a little bit different from the rest of the Oryx. And then it's time to highlight him up a little bit. So I literally just used Nurgling Green. Nurgling Green is a very kind of, I think, it seems to be an underappreciated green kind of paint, um, especially for Oryx, but it works very, very well. You can get some really cool looks, and it makes him look a little bit more kind of, um, a little bit lighter, a little bit like he's not, a bit pale, a bit sickly, and definitely grot-like. Then for the rags that he's wearing, I've used good old uh, Barrack Nar Burgundy as one of the shades. Uh, this works very, very well. It's a different paint. I've only used it once since I bought it, and it does do the trick. It's a pretty cool one. Um, yeah, it's just just right for this type of model, I think. And then, of course, you just learn a little area, so I literally used good old uh, Barrett, good old Dryad Bark for this part. Uh, again, keeping it that earthy theme, which is exactly what you want. If you wanted to, you can use Fondia Brown, uh, which will do exactly the same job, uh, but you are going to want to keep it earthy colours mostly anyway. Then for his pot, I've literally layered over with a bad and black. It's a simple trick. It makes it look cast iron. Once you highlight certain areas with Iron Breaker and then go back over with Norn Oil, it shades the right areas at the right times and gives a darker kind of black but without having that kind of shininess to it. And then there's all the different little pouches and bags and everything that he's carrying on his back. Um, for this, I've used Mournfang Brown, I've used some Fondia Brown, I've used some good old Xandri Dust, and I have also used some Wraith Bone for these guys. It works very, very well. It has a good trick to it. Once as soon as you kind of shade it over with, say, like Agrax Earthshade, for instance, or Non Oil, it does have a nice little kind of, uh, gives it a bit of a groove and kind of blends it all in quite well. For things like the ladles and the pots that he's carrying, and of course he's carrying a spear at the end of the day, uh, I've used iron, iron Breaker over that metallic work. It works very, very well. You could do it the same way that you've done the pot if you wish to, uh, entirely up to you, but very, very kind of um, unique ways of doing everything, which is the main thing that you want. Now, for inside that cauldron, you want to do it however you want to do it. Now, I've gone for Nagaroth Knight as kind of like a top layer, and then I've gone for uh, good old Zerius Purple as a second layer, Gene Steel Purple, and then Slanesh Grey to highlight everything. Um, I wanted to go for a kind of a purpley kind of spell that looks a bit dark, a bit grimy, and it has that kind of edgy kind of 
look to it which is exactly what I wanted out of the model pretty good stuff um, I would paint these models up again uh, if I got a second set of them which who knows maybe that'll be a thing in the future if they do a second version of Mortal Realms magazine which I personally kind of see happening but it may not you never know who knows but all in all I've enjoyed painting the models um, I've still got a long way to go to finish that box off so I'm really really looking forward to getting going with these guys uh, and getting further into the box set um, next up there will be more Stormcast Eternals and there will be more Mortal Realms videos to come uh, and then we will be moving on to Imperium in the very very near future as well as well as having a very special project which I am going to get started on soon and start recording uh, it will come out in multiple parts because if this is a different something slightly different but still in that Warhammer painting spectrum so something to look forward to really really good stuff thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the near future bye bye now